Welcome to Birds of Prey Sports Talk, where we cover Orioles and Ravens news weekly. We're your host, Jared and TJ. And TJ, what day is it today? It's Clinchmas. Exactly. Merry Clinchmas, everybody, as the Orioles clinched their first AL East title since 2014. And, I mean, I could not be happier. I was on the verge of tears watching that game, you know, because I had to sit and watch, you know, Rio Ruiz play third base while Jimmy Yacobonis gives up a game-winning home run to the freaking to Vladdy and they, you know, to, to Vlad Jr. while they're kicking their ass like 21 to two or something like that. The point I'm trying to make here is that I me and TJ went to games back when we were bad. You know, I went to games with other people when we were bad, you know, just it's so hard to watch because there was no congruency. There was, there, there was no, you know, consistency whatsoever on players in the team. You know, but before I get into all of that, I mean, give me your just first raw reactions to the Orioles within the AL East, like for the first time since 2014. Honestly, you know, this was a, a long time coming, you know, and, and I remember, you know, the text messages me and you exchanged where it's like, there's going to be one day where we're good again. There's going to be one day where, you know, we're not rebuilding anymore. We're not only hearing about us adding to the farm system. You know, we're actually going to be in the field with the other teams right. and, you know, it's crazy it feels like it's came so fast right you know what i'm saying you know and we're not even at our final form of what we could be yet right, exactly. we talk about that all the time i mean the possibility to add you know more superstars to this team and we also have a great farm system exactly. you know the future is very bright for us and this is just to, i'm hoping that you know we can just treat the farm system we can treat the players you know right you know because this could be the tip of the iceberg you know, of what we can be in the future. We could be a dynasty. And right. so, you know, just first for our reactions, I'm excited. I'm nervous because that's it's a whole new nerve system when it comes to, you know, having a playoff team. You know, I think my main fear is I don't want us to be, you know, kind of like how the Giants were a couple of years ago, you know, winning all those games in the regular season and then not performing in the playoffs. You know, I don't want us to have all of these wins in vain. You know, I want us to, I want us to, you know, really show that we belong because we, we're one of the best teams in the league. We don't seem to get that much coverage, you know, by the big broadcasting companies like ESPN, you know, CBS, you know, just companies like that, you know, um, and we deserve it. You know, we've been playing our tails off all this year. You know, we have, we have guys that are about to be superstars on the verge, you know, Adley Rushman, Gunnar Henderson, you know, even, even Mount Castle sometimes, I know we get on him a lot, but he, he, he can be a superstar as well, you know, and obviously Grayson Rodriguez and and Kyle Bradish, we have a lot of stars on this team. And, you know, I just hope that, you know, we don't, we don't lay a goose egg. You know, we go out there, we show why we won a hundred games this season in our AL East champs. And, just kind of the piggyback of what you're saying. I mean, I mean, it's hard. You know, I mean, what did everybody drag the Orioles through the mud through the rebuild? You know, any chance they got to dunk on us, they would do it. You know, like this, they shouldn't be a franchise. Why are they even in the MLB? Like they're a joke. They never win anything. You know, just any chance anybody ever got. It was hard to look at that as a fan. You know, I'm not a player. I couldn't even imagine as a manager or a GM or as a player, you know, because I mean, it was a clown show, you know, honestly, those from 2017 to 2019, I'm sorry, 2020, 2022, really the 2021, it was hard, you know, and then you had to come to the fact, you come accept the terms that, you know, Manny was gone, Adam was gone, Scope was gone, O'Day was gone, you know, Gosman gone, Bundy gone, all these guys were gone, Manny, Davis, well, Davis stayed around, unfortunately, but, um, you know, <laughs> don't, don't mean to duck on him, but, um, you know, it was hard watching this team in 2019. I mean, I went to opening day that year, and we had, like, taken an early lead in the game and gave it up real quick. And then, I mean, the, the Yankees just destroyed us that season. Every seemed like every game. The freaking Blue Jays, every chance that they got, got destroyed us or dunked on us, you know. Uh, you know, um, I don't remember the Red Sox beating up on, that, up, up on us that much, but the Rays, <laughs> did they ever beat us up during the rebuild? They, they leveled us a lot. I believe one year they went like 18 and one against us, you know, and that's pathetic, you know, and, you know, 
it's one thing to say it now, but I mean, like I said, going on Twitter, or going on Instagram and just being like hearing everybody say what they say about us, you know, like, you, like you remember that one year, I don't know if you remember that one year, I think it was 2022 or 2021 when every team had a chance to make the postseason, even if it was like a 0.3 chance and they gave the Orioles a 0% chance, like no chance. This team's terrible. They'll never make it, you know? And I mean, we didn't, you know, so I guess they were right, but you know, it, that hurt. You know, because I don't know. It's just if it, it just was disrespectful, you know, and I know we crap on bad teams now and, you know, whatever, you know, but we're not like the hurtful stuff. Like this team shouldn't be a franchise and they're a joke. Why are they even in the MLB? And, you know, they'll never win again. Like just stuff like that. It's just it makes you feel even better. Now we have 100 wins. We just had 100 loss two years ago. If we had this podcast two years ago, we'd be talking about this team with 100 losses. 100 losses. What's today? September 29th? I'm, I'm going to look up and see, you know, because this team, you know, it, there was nothing. I guess, damn, they, they stopped it. <laughs> so we don't – I don't know exactly what the record is, but, you know, on September 29th in 2021, I can bet you we had 100 losses. I mean, I went to a game in the middle of a 14-game losing streak or whatever it was. I went to a game in the middle of a 19 game losing streak, you know, just, I mean, I had to watch DJ Stewart out there, you know, you know, but it was just a small increment success, like from Mount Castle in 2020 to, to means and means in 2019, Mount Castle in 2020, Mullins in 2021 and Hayes in 2022, Santander in 2022, you know, Rutschman in 2022, Gunner, all these guys, Bradish, now 2023 is even more. Gunner's breakout season, Grayson, you know, Bradish even more. Means is back. You know, Kramer is still doing pretty decent. Mount Castle has been battling with injuries, but has been on the team producing. Mullen's battling with injuries, but his glove is unmatched. Hayes is an all-star. Santander is a power hitter. Rutschman is an all-star. Gunner is a future all-star. Adley was in the home run derby and shocked the world with his switch hitting, you know, whatever. But just... It was it was it was just a great thing to see, and then seeing how emotional Hyde got was just, it, you know, it just showed how much he cared, you know, because I can't even imagine being in this position, you know, it, it had to be tough. I mean, could you imagine being Brandon Hyde all those years, seeing all those freaking guys, you know, seeing the whole league pretty much not take you seriously, and even the experts or whatever, like, yeah, and then. I couldn't, and I, I mean, I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off, but, you know, and then they're, they're calling out his job, you know, they're starting mm-hmm. to question, do you know what you're doing, you know, and right. it feels insulting, so I, I can only right. imagine what I felt. Exactly. So, the Orioles, like I said, they've clinched the AL East with three games to go. They're 159. Just just take that in. 150. They have not lost 60 games yet. They probably will lose 60 games or maybe a little bit more, but they will have won triple digit wins, got to the triple digits wins. And I have never, this is, this is the best team or team I've watched. You know, I take the 2014 team's power all day, but everything else that they do is I watch them more than the 2014 team, more than the 2012 team, definitely more than the 2016 team, you know? So they, so they show so much fight. They always, they're clutch. They, they they show so much grit, and I, w- I want to see this team in the World Series. You know, I want us to put I want us to put the world on notice for good. Like, yeah, we won the AL East, and yeah, we won hundred games, but that's not going to matter if we get put out in the first round. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean, what genuinely, what, like, how, like, if you had to just be honest about it, how far do you think we can go? Do you think we can do it all? You know. That's why, you know, when we talked about those series against the Astros and the Rays, you know, and, and and when we're going up against playoff teams, the way we've played them, that's why I'm so critical, you know, besides that one Astros loss, that's why I'm so critical about how we do. You know, how we do in the regular season, it will show a lot of what we can do against them in the playoffs. You know, and if we're playing them right, when we lose, if we're learning from our losses, that is a good sign. And I feel like we can I feel like we can go toe to toe with them. Right. I really feel like we do. You know, when the Astros came in Baltimore, they were three steps ahead of us. We we're always trying to catch up back to them, catch back up to them. And when it seemed like almost every game, right? 
a couple weeks ago, we stopped by Houston. They're they're catching up to us. Right. And that's what I like. That's what I like to see. That's what we like to see. We've learned. And so, you know, I feel like we can go toe to toe with these uh with these teams, you know. Right. Do we need a little bit of luck to go our way? Yes, we do. But what team doesn't, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, I feel like we can go toe to toe, but we have to stay consistent. You know, no no more errors, you know, because we know our record is when we do errors. No, no errors, no funny business. You know, when you when it's time to slam the door, slam it shut and lock it with three locks, you know, do, you know, do whatever you can to to just help your team win. So I believe we can. Right. So I fully agree, you know, and, you know, who this is just the beginning of who knows what, you know, all I can just pray is that Elias keeps his team together. He keeps drafting well, guys keep coming up. And I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's exciting. It's so exciting. Like who knows what this is the beginning of, you know, we, I mean, back of the 2012 playoff run, I mean, we were in the wild card game. We were on the road team in the wild card game. We were the last team to make it in, but now we're the best team to be in, in, in the AL at least, you know, so just an emotional roller coaster over the years, you know, obviously with the terrible play, you know, Mo Gabba passing away, Trey Mancini having cancer and a whole plethora of just negative things that seem to happen. You know, it finally seems like things are going our way. And it, baseball, you know, Baltimore is better when the Orioles are good. You know, I mean, the Ravens are good. Well, at least we think. Um, we hope. But, um, yeah, um, you know, I know Brooksy and Mo are up there watching us, you know, from wherever the vantage point is now. You know, very proud of this team. You know, I want. I just want to see them do it. I really do. Like, in my lifetime, I want to see the Orioles win at least once. I'll take even more than that. But I'm not going to be gritty at the moment. I, I want to see them win once. I've seen the Ravens win. I want to see the Orioles do it. And I really, really believe that I think they have a chance to do it this year. I really do. I haven't felt this way since 2014. You know, so – and what were we in – I was in sixth grade in 2014. Yeah. It's the last time we won the division. So it's just like – I'm in college. You know, at least supposed to be. You know, so I just – it's amazing. 159, you know – Obviously, we got one more series to break down versus the Red Sox. That series is not over yet, but there is no more looking in the rearview mirror anymore. The Rays do not matter to us unless we play them in the divisional series, you know. So, you know, and then we can't avoid any matchup. Let's just get the let's just get the job done. That's all I gotta say. So, anyways, that'll be our that's our uh, that's our raw reactions to the AL East title. You know, just. An amazing night overall. They signed, oh yeah, they signed the lease too. So the Orioles are going to be here for thirty more years. You know, just an amazing. It's just an amazing day. You know, just an amazing day. And um, I, I just continue to hope for more amazing days in the Orioles' future. So, anyways, like I said, that's all raw reactions to the Orioles clinching the AL East title. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Share uh, our socials. All our socials should be right here. So give those a follow. Um, our second channel, Casual Cinema. Um, don't forget to check that out. That'll be in the description. Um, and more birds of prey. We're TJ and Jared, and we're out. Yeah.